next project I wanted to talk about is um, the uh, George W. Bush Presidential Center, which was just um, dedicated this past spring, and that comes in at $30 million. Um, it's right outside of SMU. SMU um, campus is right here. Um, there's a highway that's lower and loud, and then this is the, um, the 25 acres that um, was used for the site. That's the existing site. Um, this is actually a before, and this is now the, um, the that was a pre-existing, and this is now the existing site. The building was by um, Robert A.M. Stern Architects, um, really great firm to work with. Um, and these are some of the, the shots, um, recent shots from there. But what I really want to talk about is um, there was a level of resourcefulness here that um, was, was quite tricky to deal with. For one thing, um, it's a platinum lead building, and so that means lots of things right away. But this is a honkin' building. <laughs> I mean, it is really, the, the, I think it's something like three or four acres in plan. And it has basements, and it, it had, you know, something like 200,000 cubic yards of soil. Well, if you do the math, you know, by the truckload, there's, you've spent all the landscape budget. So we started with that flat site that you saw, and one of the things that we, first things we did is we realized we had to reuse the existing soil. It's just too expensive, and it was the wrong thing to send it away, right? You take care of your own messes. So one of the things that started to develop, of course, is this very contoured landscape. But in that, we also had to take care of drainage, and so a system of valleys and um, valleys or bioswales and platforms started to emerge. This is a very early model. It's sort of, it's, it stayed somewhat true to that. There's the, um, almost a year now, um, what it looked like just as it was um, beginning to finish construction. Um, we do diagrams like this to help um, explain things not only to ourselves but also to to clients of what we're thinking about. So again, you can use the Great Lawn as a reference and you can start to see how water is going to flow downhill and then go into a wetland that then goes into, I think it's 200, it says over to like 250,000 gallon cistern um, that's below grade. And when we started to look at having these kinds of landscapes, we went in the Dallas area and really started looking at precedents. And in fact, we, we were given um, ideas like, for instance, the seep um, from visiting various sites and having people take us on tours. But just to quickly explain, basically water originates up in the parking lots, which thanks to Laura Bush were made very small and um, diminutive compared to other presidential um, libraries and centers. That water is piped underground on this side. It, it appears here above grade and then it goes into the bioswale and gets filtered as it's going through and ends up in the cistern below and we are able to provide 50% of our own irrigation needs in the first three years and then after that um, well, it, it will probably be used 25% of the time because the landscape will have been established by then. So here's the origination point. These are the bioswales up in the parking lots. Um, we worked with um, a civil engineer to help si um, size these. Um, and then there's the seep. So from the parking lot to the seep. And the seep was this idea of having the stormwater expressed. So as long as we were going to collect the stormwater, we wanted to have people experience that in as many different ways as possible. So there's the seep, here's the, the, um, the, the diagram that shows that from a pipe it goes into a holding area and then it seeps out through that stone, goes into a bioswale and continues to go down. And there is the seep um, in action. The seep is 
further upstream, this is one of the lower um, bioswales. Um, it goes through a structure of a bridge, which, so all of this, of course, is under construction. It gets, it gets held here, and then it seeps through the stones on the other side so that it's, it's constantly being slowed down so that sediments can come out. It's getting cleaned by phytoremediation. So now we're on the high side, on the other, um, the other arm of the bioswale. So it's making its way down and eventually comes to a similar bridge where it gets held here for a while and then seeps through the joints. And there's um, the parking lot water in this direction actually comes out through a pipe here into a four bay with that same kind of bridge structure. There are three bridges within the, the what we call the back 40. Um, so water comes in here, it's held by this, and then seeps out into the bioswale that goes down. And then it's held in front of the, um, it's held in front of the wetlands, which are here. So this photo is taken in that area. And then it goes into, eventually there's the bridge, it eventually goes into a wetland area. So um, this is just something that the, the camera caught. There was, of course, a construction camera. So everybody kind of cleared the site when they, they heard the rain was coming and this is the result just a couple hours afterwards. And all of that water sinks down and goes into the, um, to the stormwater collection device. So you had to plan for those, you know, you're planning for, of course, the worst event. Um, but as we all know, those come several times a year. But of course, paired with thinking about the water is also the, the North Central Texas plant community. So um, we looked into um, how we might do lawn in the, in the project. Um, and I'll talk about that um, in a little bit. Um, but we also had tall grass prairie, wildflower meadow, savanna and woodland, flood, uh, flood plain forest, and a wet prairie. So in 25 acres, we have all of these different diverse um, landscapes, and you can see them diagrammed out here. You can start to see the mosaic of, of uh, landscape types that are woven into the site. Savannah and um, woodland plantings, um, again, traveling around the, the, um, the, the, uh, the area, and also making the smart move to hire the Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center, who were instrumental in telling us what the proper communities were, where to go look. They collected, um, you know, they made suggestions about plant palettes. And that's the Savannah woodland built. And very few trees, right? Because, um, because you, you, you know, we don't want the character of it to change a lot over time. So just a few spots for shade um, here and there. And then the wet prairie, of course, um, is, uh, it's, wet, it's, it stays moist a lot of the time. It's rare to have standing water as we're looking at, at it now. And then the tall grass prairie, which also has a mix of um, wildflowers in it. And then the wildflower meadow, which is uh, chocolate block with, um, with lots of wildflowers. And um, we worked on soils quite a bit. We had um, a soil scientist working with us because we were piling all of that soil and none of it was really suitable for planting. So we worked with the soil scientists to come up with ways to alter the existing soil and also to import um, more soil for plant growth. There's the, this is probably one of the most interesting things that's come out of this, which is the native um, the native uh, grass uh, short prairie. This is a, a seed mix that the Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center happened to be working on when we approached them to, to um, be on our team. 
And it's a mix of six grasses, used to be seven, but six grasses that basically make this long. It's going to be kept at about eight inches or so. It's really beautiful. This is very early in its seeding um, that can be walked on and that its irrigation needs are almost non-existent. So it needs the early spring watering and it needs the fall watering, but in the middle of the summer, it's pretty drought tolerant. And in fact, they're selling bags of this in the gift shop. Can you imagine? And then just some images of it um, as it's, it's grown in. So, you know, this is, it won't look like this next year. The, the, we were actually lucky. The Forbes came up first. Usually the grasses outcompete them, and, and we were lucky this year. They came up, and the grasses are continuing to develop, to develop. So it probably won't be this great a show next year, but a pretty, pretty solid one anyway. But there are a few other components. There's a, um, an amphitheater for performances or, or, you know, gathering. And then there's also something we call the Texas Rose Garden because in the museum, there is, of course, um, the requisite replica of the Oval Office. 